Zoom starts right now. We are now two years into the coronavirus pandemic, but it's not over yet. Many communities around the country, including our own, seeing another surge in cases. Meanwhile, the Food and Drug Administration has authorized Pfizer's COVID booster shot for children 12 to 15 years old. And the agency also reduced the amount of time everyone should wait between receiving a second vaccine dose and the booster from six months to five months. This comes as millions of American children return to school today, including here in San Antonio. ABC's Rena Roy reports for some that means going back to remote learning. As COVID cases multiply fast coast to coast, some schools taking more precautions in the new year. Atlanta public schools going remote temporarily, along with Cleveland, Milwaukee, and Newark. But in New York City, about a million students are expected to be back in person with new COVID safety measures. We lost almost two years of education. We can't do it again. Chicago and Boston also sticking to in-person learning, with Massachusetts distributing more than 227,000 rapid tests to staff. Dr. Fauci telling ABC he supports keeping kids in classrooms as much as possible. I plead with parents to please seriously consider vaccinating your children, wearing masks in the school setting, doing tests to stay approaches when children get infected. I think all of those things put together it's safe enough to get those kids back to school. Cases skyrocketing more than 200% in the past two weeks. Now more than 400,000 reported a day more than ever before. And there's growing concern for children. Last week, the nation seeing a 66% increase in pediatric hospitalizations because of COVID-like symptoms, including Sarah Barlow's two-year-old daughter. The high fevers came in waves. It can get bad. It's not just a simple cold for, for everybody. This morning, the FDA authorizing booster shots for 12 to 15 year old and Dr. Fauci saying the CDC may now update some of its new guidance, potentially recommending people with asymptomatic infections and no fever to get a negative test before ending their isolation at five days. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, starting today, Metro Health will be once again reporting COVID-19 cases in Bear County. Recent data that we've been showing you has been provided by the Department of State Health Services instead. The latest information now showing that Bear County had 733 new cases, 352 people were hospitalized, 74 in the ICU, and 30 on ventilators. And with cases climbing, local businesses are making sure their clients and staff are feeling safe and offering COVID testing. At Geekdom, a co-working space downtown, COVID testing conducted by Community Labs is offered weekly to staff and members. Tiffany Huertas explains how offering this service to its staff and members has become a game changer for the business. I'm really, really glad that it's offered here as an option. It's very hard to get testing done right now. At the basement of the Rand building in downtown, Geekdom staff and members can get COVID tested on a weekly basis. The co-working space partnered with the nonprofit Community Labs to offer PCR tests. Typically within 24 hours, you have your results and you know whether or not you're safe to continue to come back to work, be around family members and all different kinds of things. Community Labs has been doing COVID testing at Geekdom since August 2020 and they never stopped. They test about 50 to 100 people weekly. It has been a game changer to prevent community spread within our organization, and within our companies that occupy our space. So we've grown uh, our footprint to reach over 300 campuses and businesses across Bear County as far south as Laredo. Following the winter break, the CEO of Community Labs says they expect to see a spike in positivity cases. We normally see spikes in positivity once people have been indoors uh, for events such as Christmas or Thanksgiving. With COVID tests hard to come by, Daniel is happy to have this testing option available at Geekdom. It's, I, it's a huge privilege, I think, to be able to come in and be able to get tested three times a week if needed. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And if you are looking to get tested, the city does have 20 free testing sites operated by Curative. It does recommend that you make an appointment first, though. You can find more information on the City of San Antonio website. Looking outside with live cam, we've got a pretty day on our hands, but a pretty chilly day, too. Yeah, it took a while for us uh, to get up close to 50. Uh, after a really chilly morning, we uh, started off in the 20s and even teens in some spots. It was a hard freeze for, for much of South Texas. Look at the numbers this morning, 26 
in San Antonio, 21 Bernie stage 18 in Kerrville this morning it was 25 in New Braunfels. You zoom out some even Del Rio got down below freezing Korea. So Springs got down to 23. We've rebounded though pretty nicely now 50 degrees at the airport 51 Pleasanton. We're in the upper 40s for places like Rock Springs and you Valley clear skies should go around dry air. So you'll see these big swings in temperature. We'll see the numbers drop again tonight, but it won't be as cold as it was this morning on your Tuesday morning. I do want to show you the pollen count mountain cedars in the high category. It dropped some though surprisingly from yesterday's numbers despite all those gusty winds yesterday. It's at 6150 molds for whatever reason are still hanging in there too. They're high at 1720. Your forecast for today will be up around 56 this afternoon. Southwesterly winds will be generally pretty light clear skies and we see those temperatures fall quickly tonight and we will get down again close to freezing by tomorrow morning. We've got a warm up a front to talk about and maybe just maybe a few rain chances by the weekend. We'll take a look at all that coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you so much, Justin. New at noon, San Antonio police trying to figure out how a man ended up with a serious head injury on the west side. So far, officers think he and another person got into some sort of a fight. It happened yesterday in the 300 block of North Zarzamora. That's near West Commerce. Police say they were originally called to investigate reports of a shooting, but when they got to the scene, they found a victim bleeding heavily from his head. He'd apparently been struck with a blunt object. So far, police have not arrested anyone. And San Antonio police are telling us the shootings of two men on the city's northwest side were not random. They believe the gunman purposely targeted those victims. The shootings happened at a home in the 2100 block of Clower Street near West Avenue. As Katrina Weber reports, the crime also left a third person shaken. This commotion in the middle of Clower Street was the result of a crime inside a home here. San Antonio police say it began with two men pounding on the front door after 4.30 this morning and waking up the people inside. They uh, opened the door and uh, there was uh, two gentlemen with guns uh, that they uh, were demanding to see one of the occupants of the house. Police say the 50 year old who actually answered the door at first refused to cooperate, but quickly found out those gunmen were on a mission. He actually got pulled out into the front yard and um, zip tied and they threw him on the ground. He told police while he lay outside, the gunmen went inside and shot the two other men, their apparent targets. Police say luckily their wounds were not life threatening. One of them was struck in the, uh, in the back. I think it was in and out wound that went through his lower back and uh, the other one was shot in the upper shoulder. As the 52 and 62 year old victims were rushed to a hospital, police took their time searching both for the gunman and any clues they left behind. They also tried to question the man in the zip ties, but didn't get far. Police say that the man who was zip tied was too upset to offer them much of a description of those gunmen. The only thing that they know is that they left the home in a silver Jeep. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A woman behind the wheel near I-35 says she was shot in her car on the city's northeast side. She was driving on an access road of I-35 northbound just before midnight last night and then was hit with bullets. After getting hit, she then drove six miles before pulling over for help. She only did it when she saw flashing lights on another city highway. Sarah Costa explains what police know about this bizarre incident. While driving on the access road of one of the most traveled interstates in San Antonio, a 45 year old woman told police someone pulled up next to her and shot at her car several times. San Antonio police were working a crash around 1145 last night on Northeast Loop 410 and Starcrest when a driver pulled over and told police she had just been shot. Police spoke with the woman who told them she was driving on the access road of I-35 on the city's northeast side between the Riddiman and Eisenhower exits when a dark colored vehicle pulled up next to her car. She says the person driving that car began to shoot at her several times. Police say many of those bullets hit her car on the driver's side, including shattering her windows. One of those bullets hit the 45 year old in the leg. Police applied a tourniquet and she was taken to Bamsey in stable condition and is expected to be OK. Investigators were sent to the area where the woman said she was shot, but no suspects were seen. Police say this is an open investigation. It is unclear if she knew the suspect or was able to give police a description of what the shooter looked like. From the northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 
So coming up in this half hour, the Cowboys offense couldn't get anything going against the Cardinals yesterday, and now they've dropped in the standings. We'll explain coming up. New year, new goals. A lot of folks kicking off 2022 by tackling a list of resolutions. However, a study by Scranton University found that only 8% of people keep their New Year's resolutions. Right now on KZ.com, some tips to help you stick with it and keep those healthy habits coming. Oh, this would be good, a really good habit Ooh. to make. Winning the lottery, the new year, might bring some people a lot of luck and a lot of cash. The Powerball jackpot now up to $522 million. I'd share with y'all. This comes hey, after nobody won the big <laughs> prize over the weekend. This drawing is happening tonight. I'd share. So you take us to dinner? I would take you to dinner and right. lunch. Right. That would be a big steak dinner for that. Uh, yeah. With you that mean, kind of money, kind I of could money. afford it. I think so. <laughs> ten steak dinners, at least. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's good. Once a week for the next ten years. We're already making demands. <laughs> I got to win first. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the aquifer is uh, down three tenths of a foot to 663.3. We do need some rain. There's not much in the forecast. And we showed you the pollen count a little bit earlier. But recapping here, mountain cedar and molds both high. Mountain cedar down a little bit from yesterday. We take a look at that seven day forecast, which does include a warm up coming up. Ooh, look at us. Flat out 50 degrees now. That's good. Even. Heat wave. Cool. So that means there's no wind. There's no wind chill anymore. That's true. Well, <laughs> there I tell you what, I'm still but, thawing yes. out from Are you? that wind over the weekend. Boy, it was. If you didn't put up your Christmas decorations, Mother Nature did it for you. Uh, they just went right down the street. Uh, the way the winds were blowing uh, yesterday, uh, the winds have let up obviously quite a bit, and that's what allowed those temperatures to really cool off this morning. Let's talk Mountain Cedar though first. A lot of people asking questions about that. We're at 6,150 today. And this uh, graph kind of shows you how the season plays out. We typically peak in late January, mid January, late January is when we see our highest numbers. But as of late, we've had some pretty high totals, some of the highest numbers we've seen in a while. Can't say that we're peaking early. I don't know that that's the case, but uh, bottom line, we still got some more time before we get rid of Mountain Cedar. So just heads up. Typically it goes away. We usually say around Valentine's Day. So a whole nother month ahead of us. And as we look out across the state, clear skies, that front has cleared everything out. And with clear skies, uh, you, you had the really cold temperatures this morning and the, the really pretty nice temperatures as we'll, we'll be looking at this afternoon. Uh, satellite and radar up across Pacific Northwest to show you this because there is uh, quite a bit of action up there. A lot of heavy snow, rain, that'll cause some travel delays there. And then on the East Coast, a little compact storm, but this one's causing a lot of headaches around the, the nation's capital. Washington, D.C. getting a lot of snow. That stretches up to New York and back down into the higher elevations there of North Carolina. So either coast, that's where all the action is. We are not seeing anything here in Texas. It is really pretty quiet. And for most of the country, actually, it is pretty quiet in the wake of that front. A little chilly. Temperatures uh, 24 Omaha, 28 St. Louis, 20 in Chicago. And we're feeling some of that cooler air here in Texas. It's really just Florida now, the only place that is still hanging on to some warm weather. 72 right now in Miami. And here across the state, 40s and 50s for the most part. Uh, 49 Waco, 52 San Angelo, 54 right now in Del Rio. There's the scene outside. We've got a lot of blue skies. It's really uh, turning into a pretty nice day. 50 degrees at the airport, 52 stints and 50 Kelly. Still in the 40s at Randolph. And we're carrying a, a light southerly wind. 51 in Bandera, some 40s still in the hill country and then you moderate into the mid 50s as you get south of town uh, looking at the dew points air is powder dry we've got the desert air basically in place right now and that doesn't really change for the next couple of days i do think that we'll start to see a little bit more moisture uh, maybe wednesday but then it gets pushed out again by another front and then we get another surge of moisture as we get into the weekend and uh, that's going to allow for some more cloud cover and maybe a shower although it's not looking all that great for the most part. It's it's going to be a, a dry week. And as we look at the forecast here, uh, you can see our first front. This is scheduled to arrive Thursday morning around uh, maybe sunrise, maybe a little bit after moves through. It does not bring any rain, just gusty winds with it. So that uh, pushes through. And then by Saturday, we'll get a little bit of moisture return and the models are hinting at maybe a few showers east of San Antonio. 
but it doesn't uh, doesn't put out much rain for us. Uh, and really, for most of South Texas, we stay fairly dry. I'm going to put in a 10% chance of rain Saturday, Sunday to account for that. But don't get uh, too excited about it. It's not looking great. Rest of today, 53 by 2 p.m., 56 by 4 p.m. That'll be our high temperature. And once the sun goes down, as you might imagine, those temperatures will fall off quickly. 49 by 6 p.m., 40 by 8 p.m. with clear skies. And the extended forecast, 64 tomorrow. By the way, we do start off right around freezing tomorrow morning. Not as cold as this morning, but right around the freezing mark. 72 Wednesday, we get another front Thursday. Windy, turning cooler on Thursday. Maybe another light freeze Friday morning. And then some warmer temperatures by the weekend. And more humidity, too, both Saturday and Sunday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Pretty bizarre moment in the Bucks Jets game involving a Buck receiver and an early exit. We'll explain that coming up. And the Spurs had a rough end of the year and already having a rough start to the new year. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas and Arizona battling for playoff seeds in the NFC. Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray feeling at home at AT t Center yesterday, all the way back to his high school days at Allen, where he won three state titles. So he knows what it's like to win there. Second quarter, 3 nothing in the second. Fourth and goal, Murray, bootleg. Steel Knight alum Antoine Wesley, also a Texas Tech alum. Back of the end zone, it's a 10-point lead. Just before the half, Cowboys find the end zone. One of a few bright spots for the offense. Dak Prescott, Michael Gallup, who makes a great adjustment for the TD. But after the game, owner Jerry Jones said he tore his ACL. He's done for the year. Waiting on MRI to confirm, but it's 13-7 Arizona at half. Murray connects with Wesley again from 18 yards out. Great leaping grab for the second TD of the day. Arizona up 22-7. Going into the fourth, Cowboys third and goal. Prescott, play action. Cedric Wilson back of the end zone. That cuts the Cardinals lead to eight. Cards to add another field goal. Go back up 11. Cowboys come right back. Prescott rolling out. Fires to Amari Cooper this time in the back of the end zone. They complete the two-point conversion. The Cowboys only down a field goal, 25-22. But now they need a stop on defense, second and four for the Cardinals. First down will seal it, and it does. Murray keeps it, gets the first. Going outside, Arizona scored on six of their ten possessions, and that includes their last possession where they ran out the clock. All right, so here's your final, 25-22. Dallas now 11-5. and During postgame, the Cowboys ripped the game officials. Playing against the refs again, like usual. Um, seems like it's every week occurrence. Uh, so we just got to, you know, tune that out and just deal with it. Can't move the ball. Every big play was called back because of some kind of call. The refs, I feel like, dictated that game. We're still a good team. Uh, even though we was facing two teams tonight, uh, you know, the results ain't come out like we wanted it to. We'll play against the 11 and uh, the others if we have to. Um, I've come accustomed to it, honestly. I mean, I'm going to let the NFL handle it. Uh, I know, you know, it's a possibility. We see both of these teams uh, in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, hopefully the NFL can sit down uh, with their team, uh, review the film. Uh, learn from their mistakes and get better from it. Kind of like y'all need to do, sit down and learn from your mistakes, get better from it. All right, so the NFL just came out with this new schedule coming up Saturday. Mark your calendar. Saturday, it's the Cowboys and the Eagles at 7.15. You can see that game live right here on KSAT 12. Once again, that's Saturday night. As bad as the Texans have been, they had a shot at a three-game winning streak. First since 2018, they faced the San Francisco 49ers yesterday. No scores, second quarter. Texans on the Niners, eight. Davis Mills over the middle. Brandon Cooks, touchdown. Texans lead 7-3 at half. But here come the Niners. Quarterback Trey Lance rolls out, finds running back Elijah Mitchell. Where's the defense? That's a touchdown. Fourth quarter, Lance rolling out again, this time going deep to Debo Samuel. There's no defense there around the quarterback. There's not much around the receiver. A little broken tackle and done. It's, they outscored the Texans 20 to nothing in the second half. Niners keep their playoff hopes alive. Here's that final 23 to 7. Houston is now 4 and 12. The big thing for us is just continuing to fight. We got one more game left this season. Everyone's extremely grateful for the position they're in. Um, I feel like we have the best jobs in the world. And everyone's ready to just come out, put their head down, get another really good work uh, week of practice and come out and um, hope for a better result next week. All right. They might want a better result because it'll be the last game of the regular season, last game for them for this season. They take on the Titans at noon in NRG Stadium on Sunday. 
And here's the bizarre moment of the NFL season. It happened on Tampa Bay sideline, and it happened in the middle of the game between the Bucks and the Jets. That is in the third quarter. Bucks down 14 with the ball and receiver. And Tony Brown takes off his jersey, pads, and shirt, throwing his gloves and shirt to the stands and ran across the end zone, waving to the fans as he left the field. After the game, head coach Bruce Arian said Brown is no longer a Buck. As for the game, Tom Brady threw three touchdowns, leading the comeback for the 28-24 victory. Spurs tipped off the new year in Detroit Saturday night. Started like they finished 2021, except for the fact that no DeJounte Murray, Kata Bates, Diop, Thaddeus Young, Lonnie Walker, the fourth, plus Doug McDermott sideline due to COVID protocols. Not going to be easy. Brent Forbes came off the bench to lead the Spurs with 27. Devin Vassell added 19. Derek White with 18. The Spurs led by as many as 17 points in the second quarter before the Pistons revved up and took the lead in the third. This one ended up going to overtime. Sadiq Bay. Ended up in the corner. That's not in the corner. There he is, right there in the corner, right through the legs of Jakob Pertl and nails the three. Keldon Johnson, last shot at it. Off the backboard, off the rim. It does not fall. Spurs drop their third straight, 117 to 116 in overtime. And it gets no easier without those guys missing. Look what they've got coming up. We went up by 17 and kind of took our, our foot off the pedal. And they, uh, I mean, they, get, they you got to give them the credit. They came back hard and they, they kept fighting. So um, I think I think to take forward, the lesson to learn is, um, you know, don't take your foot off the pedal. You got to bury them. So that's not what we did. And, and we paid the price. Had a lead against Memphis and it ended up losing to Memphis. So that's two in a row they've done that too. All right, so now they take on the Toronto Raptors. That'll be tomorrow night in Toronto. Then it's off to Boston. Then it's off to Philadelphia. Then it's going to New York to take on the Brooklyn Nets. So the rough road trip continues. And the biggest Spurs news this week, assistant coach Becky Hammond returning to the WNBA to become head coach of the Las Vegas Aces. Hammond is set to receive a record-setting five-year contract that will make her the highest-paid coach in the WNBA, and she will be the team's general manager as well. She was a six-time All-Star as a player, and she has been on the Spurs coaching staff since 2014. Hammond plans to finish the WNBA or the NBA season with the Spurs before she takes over that head coaching job. And we should hear from her. Uh, looks like they've got a press conference planned this afternoon with her, the Aces, and so we'll hear from her later on today. That's great. We've been waiting to see what yeah. our next move is going to be. New today at 5, if you're looking to kick off 2022 in a healthy way, the right equipment can help. Today at 5, we're going to show you some products that you can use to reach your new year fitness goals. We are less than a week away from the one year anniversary of the protests that turned attack on the U.S. Capitol. The House Select Committee in investigating the insurrection says it is not ruling out a potential criminal referral if it finds that former President Trump committed crimes related to the event. ABC's Faith Abube has details. While a mob of his supporters attacked and desecrated the seat of American democracy on January 6th last year, GOP Representative Liz Cheney, the vice chair of the House Select Committee, claims former President Trump sat in front of a television in the White House watching the violence unfold. The committee has firsthand testimony now that he was sitting in the dining room next to the Oval Office watching the attack on television. Cheney adding that she believes if Trump won re-election in 2024, it could mean the end of American democracy. He crossed lines no American president has ever crossed before. But the committee says it wasn't until more than three hours into the chaos that Trump released this recorded message asking his supporters to go home. A brand new ABC News Ipsos poll now showing a majority of Americans believe Trump bears some responsibility for the attack. 72% also saying they believe that the riot was a threat to U.S. democracy, but only 45% of Republicans agree. As the House Select Committee investigation picks up steam, Chairman Benny Thompson says the panel isn't ruling out criminal referrals. If in the course of our review, we find something that we think warrant review, uh, or recommendation to the Department of Justice, to be honest with you, uh, we'll do it. So far, the DOJ has opened more than 700 criminal cases against suspected rioters. More than 165 have already pleaded guilty as the committee separately zeroes in on whether the insurrection was a coordinated attack. It could be 
people in the executive branch, could be people in the Department of Defense, uh, uh, some state characters, uh, some nonprofits, and some very wealthy individuals. And there are several events being planned to mark the one year anniversary of the attack, including a speech Thursday by President Biden. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Congress planning to honor a former political giant in Washington next week. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda next Wednesday. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and current Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced that decision. Reid died last Tuesday at 82 after a four-year battle with pancreatic cancer. The Nevada Democrat served in the U.S. Senate for three decades, 12 of those as a leader. Due to the pandemic, only invited guests will be able to attend next week's ceremonies and events honoring Reid. After taking an extended holiday break, the jury weighing fraud charges against former Toronto's CEO Elizabeth Holmes is getting back to their deliberations. The eight men and four women who will determine Holmes' fate spent much of their holiday season behind closed doors in a San Jose, California courthouse weighing evidence presented during a three-month trial. They were unable to reach a verdict by the middle of last week, so the jurors were given Thursday off before an already scheduled court holiday on Friday. They have spent roughly 40 hours spread across six days in deliberation so far. Colorado search teams looking for two people missing in the smoldering debris of a massive wildfire, while people who escaped the flames are now sorting through what didn't burn. Investigators are still trying to pinpoint what caused the flames to tear through nearly 10 square miles. The fire torched 1,000 homes and in other buildings as well in suburbs between Denver and Boulder. The flames broke out on Thursday, which is unusually late in the year after an extremely dry fall and amid a winter with hardly any snow. Experts say those conditions and high winds helped the fire to spread. A blast of wintry weather hitting folks on the East Coast. In Washington, D.C., the mayor issued a snow emergency for the area before the forecasted storm. And President Biden got caught in that nasty weather. He had to stay on Air Force One for about a half hour due to the storm after landing from his week on the East Coast. D.C. officials say federal offices will be closed today. The snow day will also delay the reopening of schools. They were supposed to open Wednesday after students took COVID tests Monday and Tuesday. Those tests will now be available Tuesday and Wednesday, and kids will report back to school on Thursday. Taking a look outside with live cam, we have no snow, we have very little wind. It's actually really nice compared to what we had to deal with on Sunday. Oh yeah, those winds were strong. And that storm that's producing the snow there on the East Coast will be moving off the coast a little bit later this afternoon, but not before dumping quite a bit of snow there on Washington, D.C. And that's going to cause some chain effect or chain reaction uh, when it comes to traveling. So some airports are going to see some delays on top of the, the COVID delays and all that. So stuff. So just a heads up. Let's look at the temperatures across the country. 28 in Washington, D.C. with snow being reported there still. 50 here in San Antonio, 29 Albuquerque, 26 Salt Lake City, 31 in Boise, 5 in the nation's icebox up there in International Falls. So a lot of cold temperatures around the country. We're feeling some of the cooler air here in Texas. Temperatures generally in the 40s and 50s. We're at 50 here in San Antonio. Still in the 40s for places like Dallas and Waco, Houston. Checking in at 48. Warm spots down there in Brownsville, but it's not all that warm. 60 degrees there. Uh, look outside. We've got blue skies and a pretty nice day underway. Uh, winds have been pretty light today out of the south southwest anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Dew points also very low. Air is the air is extremely dry. Our forecast today 56 the high temperature with clear skies and once the sun goes down tonight, temperatures fall off quickly into the 40s, 40 degrees by 8 p.m. And we'll start off tomorrow morning very close to freezing, not as cold as this morning, but down close to 32, 31 here in town with the light southwesterly winds. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Cancer, the second leading cause of death in the United States. And for men and women, early prevention can make a big difference. ABC's M. Wynn explains the different types of cancers that affect women and the steps you can take to stay safe. Breast, ovarian, and cervical cancers are important cancers related to women that can be prevented with timely screenings and follow-ups. Experts at USC's Keck School of Medicine say routine screenings can detect cancer at an early stage and prevent death. Cervical cancer is a slow-growing cancer. 
Women between the ages of 21 and 65 will benefit from pap smears every three years or a combination of a test named the HPV test with a pap smear every five years. For breast cancer, a mammogram can be done every two years in women between the ages of 40 and 75. Experts say that women with dense breasts are at a higher risk. A 3D mammogram can detect breast cancer in dense breasts up to 50 percent better than a regular mammogram. Other testing options include an ultrasound or an MRI. Ovarian cancer is the deadliest in women and in most cases diagnosed at an advanced stage. Unfortunately, there are no routine effective tests to detect and prevent it early. Studies show if your family member has a history of breast or ovarian cancer, or if you're of European or Ashkenazi Jewish descent, you may be at a higher risk. For more about cancer screening options, talk to your doctor. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn, ABC. We have the latest Spider-Man movie ruling at the box office again this weekend, but the superhero film also reached another milestone. We'll tell you what it is still ahead. Hello everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. AT and Verizon are denying the FAA's request to voluntarily delay the launch of their 5G services. The phone service's refusal to disrupt service may lead to a potential disruption of U.S. flight restrictions. That is, the FAA continues to show concern over signal disruptions that might have an effect on their air traffic. Now, the phone carriers have instead offered a counterproposal. This will reduce the power of their 5G services for six months. That to match the limits that regulators in France had put in place. Meanwhile. United and Spirit Airlines both offering higher pay to onboard staff members that an attempt to keep their busy schedules intact. This comes following a slew of cancellations and delays over the holidays that as airports struggle with their employees to stay healthy from COVID-19. And Morgan Stanley now agreeing to pay $60 million to settle a lawsuit by customers who had their personal data exposed. The class action lawsuit was behalf of 15 million customers who had their data exposed. That's due to Morgan Stanley's outdated data technology. Now, the bank is denying any wrongdoing. They're adding they've made substantial upgrades to their data security practices. That's according to the settlement paperwork. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Outside with Life Games. This is how it's supposed to be, I think, on January 3rd. Well, this is our two weeks of winter, right? Started yesterday. Yes, right? so. <laughs> I must say, I enjoy January. I like the warm, or December, I should say. I like the warm weather. But this is also a nice change. Well, it's not like it's, you know, it's, it's like 50 it's degrees for crying out loud. It's true. You're right. And it's not going to last that long. We'll see warmer temperatures by the end of the week and into the weekend. 50 so far today. 26 was a low this morning. That's not a record. The record low was 16 set back in 1911. The record high is 86 set back in 1971. Thankfully, we're nowhere near that. Temperatures in the mid-50s today, actually a little bit below average. And uh, we'll see a pretty nice week. Your seven-day forecast is coming up. Well, we usually get about two weeks of mm -hmm. harsh winter. Pull out the coats and the, the big polar vortex gloves and oh, all man. of that. She got to say it before I did. She, uh, she that was good. That there. sounds good, that though, doesn't it? Good. Don't you like to say that? Yeah, like to but, say. you know, I'm going to say this. I'm I'm hoping that rain doesn't come alongside this to where we have ice. No, we we, ha we don't have any of that in the forecast. Good. And I think after last February, we we're done with that. Yeah, we're we're good. Uh, <laughs> we were going to have a couple cold days here. It feels it does feel like winter, and we'll have another front this week that'll kind of reinforce some of the cooler air. And now we're switching gears to talking about rain because you know, we don't want rain with cold air, but we do need some rain in general. Where is the rain? It's been 16 days now since we've consecutive days at San Antonio International without rain. The last time we did see rain was on December 19th. So, yes, uh, in that sense, we could use a little bit. And I got to tell you, there's not a lot in the forecast. Even down the line, it doesn't look great. There is a small chance, small chance this weekend. And the drought is really trying to work its way back into Texas. You'll notice there's a lot of spots now looking at severe drought. Uh, if not extreme, and uh, that is spread in across much West Texas and then locally the same spot we've been seeing the last couple of months, but out West Big Wells, Carrizo Springs areas that are under a severe drought, and this is slowly making its way towards San Antonio. We did OK last year with rainfall. We had pretty good fall, but now with this stretch of dry conditions, droughts trying to work its way back in. I mentioned the rain chances. 
boy, they're small at this point. We're just going to go with a 10% shot Saturday, Sunday, and I'm not real confident about it. Uh, there are some showers I think that will show up east of I-35 over the weekend if we can get some moisture back in place. Nothing going on right now. Skies are clear. It's a beautiful day across the entire state of Texas, albeit a little bit cool. And you look at the satellite picture, I always think this is kind of cool to look at. Uh, once those cold fronts come through, move over the, the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico, you get sort of this cloud formation, which looks nice always on the satellite picture. But, and no rain either with those clouds either. Things are getting very quiet regionally. Looking at the time lapse this morning, beautiful sunrise and temperatures now have made their way up after starting off in the 20s to 50 degrees. Dew point is at 20 south southwesterly winds at about six miles per hour. We're at 53 comfort 51 Rio Medina 49 Kenya Lake 50 in New Braunfels and almost everybody especially north of San Antonio started off in the 20s this morning. It was in the teens in fact in Kerrville but they're up to 51 now 50 in Rock Springs 57 in Carrizo Springs and looking at the dew points the air is extremely dry when you get dew points in the teens and, and 20s. That's about as dry as it gets around here. Uh, we'll see those numbers increase a little bit, the dew points some, but not that you'll notice. It's probably not until the weekend until we get a little bit more moisture in here and you'll start to feel the humidity some. Forecast temperatures uh, this afternoon. We're up around 56 here in San Antonio. Some places down to the southwest may get close to 60. Tonight we will have clear skies, but it won't be as cold as this morning. We're thinking 31 here in San Antonio. There will be a freeze again tonight in places like Hondo, probably Uvalde, Kerrville up to Fredericksburg. If you're south of San Antonio, it'll be a close call, but even places like Pleasanton may get down to 32 tonight. As we look at the forecast down the line, there is another front that comes in Thursday morning. This does not bring rain, just brings gusty winds with it. And then by the weekend, this is that chance of rain I was speaking of. Moisture tries to come back in, and a few of the models want to bring a few showers in east of San Antonio Saturday and Sunday. Right now, just a 10% chance of rain. I'll say the rain chances, uh, the, the prospect of rain is not great. 64 tomorrow, 72 Wednesday, 66 on Thursday. We'll see some falling temperatures with that front. Another light freeze Friday morning, and then close to 70 both Saturday and Sunday with mostly cloudy skies. We'll be right back. Spider-Man No Way Home grabbed its third straight weekend crown, grossing $52.7 million this weekend. That gave it a domestic total of $610 million, cracking the all-time top 10 in just 17 days. Sing 2 stayed in second place, $19.6 million. That gave the animated sequel a 12-day domestic total of $90 million. The King's Man fought its way to third place with $4.5 million. American Underdog moved into fourth place with $4.1 million. And The Matrix Resurrections fell to fifth place on ticket sales of $3.8 million. A new animated series bringing the world of how to train your dragon to a modern setting. CNN's Rick Damagella reports. Am I asking questions? A new generation of humans and beasties meet in Dragons the Nine Realms. We come from Vikings. We don't ask for permission. We don't care what other people think. We crave adventure. There won't be any adventure if you keep breaking the rules. Set 1,300 years after the events of How to Train Your Dragon, the animated series streams on both Hulu and Peacock. Julia Stiles leads the voice cast. It's the modern world, but the kids um, like to play with dragons, and or they discover some dragons. Um, and it has the same kind of heart and spirit of the, the film, but um, some new characters. Oh, but I will, because I am your mother and have responsibilities. I play the main character's very cool mom, who is a scientist who takes him on expeditions. Just ahead, over this row of trees. You ready for this? I think you know the answer to that. It's the first animated series that I've done, so just to be working on an animated show is so cool. I love watching the animation come together and, you know, you get to go into a recording studio and everything has to be expressed with your voice, so it's like the closest I'll ever get to being a musician or a singer. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Okay.
It's SA Live time. We're already talking about how to get off to a good start. Yep. That's right. We are getting you into gear for 2022 and tackling some New Year's resolutions. And I'm sure a lot of folks ring in the new year with uh, maybe a little bit of uh, spirits here. This, believe it or not, is non-alcoholic. We're making some really good non-alcoholic drinks because a lot of people do a dry January. Yes, and your livers, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, others may want to check things off their bucket list this year. So we we have some ideas to help kick off your next adventure in today's Texas tripping. And another resolution folks might have in the new year is getting organized. Yes, indeed. And Christy Dell, owner of Flawlessly Functional Professional Organizing, is here. Don't forget about your drawers, right? Yep. A good tip is to fold in a file fold, and you'll fold in half like this. Fold it one more time. One more time again. And then you finally have a rectangle file fold. Right, so you can see, see how you, yep, what you have. Place for everything and everything in its place. Of course, a lot of folks may want to learn a new skill. Hmm, I don't recognize those hands. What mm -hmm. skill are we learning there, Miss Fiona? Uh, we are going to learn the basics of baking with the experts over at Sheer Celebrations. What did you make us? You'll I see. I don't see any cookies. You'll see. Okay, New Year's resolution? Oh, get organized. Well, we've got a segment on that coming up here. I know, so. right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm paying attention. <laughs> I hope you do. That and a whole lot more coming up. The very first show of 2022.